Simon Grace, Manly Sea Eagles superfan, joins the ET Stand podcast next. For over 50 years, people have come to see the Sharks play. Talent, skill, speed, intelligence, elite level athleticism. That's not these guys. Biased, one eyed, opinionated, more often wrong than right. They make up for their complete lack of talent with pure dribble, gibberish, and enthusiasm. This is the ET Stand Podcast. Welcome to an opposition fan preview on the ET Stand Podcast. Looking ahead to the round 27 sold out Sunday clash with our rivals, the Manly Seagulls. And you can see him here, Simon Grace. I better unmute you. I'll let you chat. Uh, welcome to the show, mate. We'll get into talking manly in a second. Mate, you're looking very maroon. Thanks very much, Baldo. Of course, I'm going to be supporting the great Seagulls. You betcha. Uh, well, we're available on YouTube, uh, Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple, and many more podcast outlets. Hit the subscribe button if you are new or follow if you're new to the channel. Let's get into it, Simon. Before we start, that's a very lovely looking display you've got there, mate. Uh, tell me about your favourite two or three jerseys that you might want to point out to us. Oh, look, I got to say, yeah, you think about last year. I'll just, I'll just shuffle to the side here a little, and uh, the old infamous jersey there uh, in the middle. Oh goodness, you've got one of them. Yes, yes. Um, none of the players have, uh, especially those seven. <laughs> uh, so that was probably probably the one that really hurt us. Um, destroyed the How season. How much is that jersey worth now? Oh, mate, it'd just still be the same. They're all overpriced as it is. Uh, not just yeah. Manly. I'm just saying NRL to start with. Um, but, yeah, the the, the the rainbow jersey there. But I'm actually a big fan. I, I love the one above, to be honest. There's just the simple away jersey, clean lines, kind of the way Turbo runs, just nice clean lines the whole way. Yeah. They wore that white jersey in a couple of the grand finals, didn't yeah. they? Actually, I've got to say, sorry, you did ask favourites, so I've got to figure out which way do I go here. Uh, there you go. The two there. The two. Yeah, they're not bad either, retros. are they? The two retros, yeah. The two retros. All I remember going to school, Johnny Gibbs, yeah, fantastic playing playing in these jerseys. So, yeah, they'd, they'd be the two favourites, those two. Um, but I've got a few, I've got to say. I've got, got a few. A few. Got a few hanging on the wall. Um, you got a yeah. few. So for, so for those who want to have a who um, are regular viewers of the ET Stand podcast, you'll know that I, when I'm at my home location, I have a similar setup, not as good as Simon's one, uh, thanks to displaywear.com.au, who are a supporter of the ET Stand podcast. And Simon is actually the principal of that business, just to be upfront. Uh, you're an absolute legend. You are very passionate about displaying your jerseys. So, um, man, I'm trying to get you to do a giveaway. You're going to do a giveaway for Sharks fans between now and the end of the season? I'd be happy to do a giveaway with you, Bolton. Absolutely. Oh. I mean, what do you got between now and the end of the season? That's probably going to be the only happy thing that you guys will have is me giving a giveaway based on your guys' form. <laughs> all right. Well, if you want to have oh, a setup like... already. We're, we're all right. Already. We're into it already. If you want to have a setup like Simon's or like mine, there's my unit there. That's the uh, yep. that's a 2022 Sign Sharks jersey. Um, it's a really fun way of changing your jerseys over and moving them up and down because you can take the jerseys off so easily. So go check it out, displaywear.com.au. That's the website. And uh, you can display your jerseys like Simon and me. All right, let's get into it. The win over the Bulldogs. It's a fair scout, mate. Uh, talk to me about how that happened for the Manly Seagulls. It's a biggie. Oh, what a great game. What an absolute great game. And it was a shocking start as well. Um, you know, we just weren't sure what was going to go on. And, uh, gee whiz, they, uh, they ended up coming out firing after um, after that early try. And, um, wow, it was, it was fantastic. Turbo, that's, I mean, big talking point there. And Saab as well. Um, yeah, you've got the pace out the back. And when Saab is running, it's just, it's beautiful to watch. And what a what a disaster for that to occur. And then with Turbo going down as well. But um, we're all hoping that the, the medical staff are, are being right, that, you know, um, we get through this weekend against you guys and then we have him back for the, the first week of the finals. But what a great win. Um, wake up call for the, for the Bulldogs, probably the best thing that could happen to them, which is a bit of a concern, um, that they realise that they've uh, they got a bit of problems uh, straight down the middle when you got the big boys running at them and they need to fix that. Well, the Manly um, big boys got over the top, did they? Is that oh, how yeah. you did it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And then just, then just put it wide. Uh, but the, the Manly were just 
awesome, awesome down the middle. Um, and I think, it's, yeah, the Bulldogs are running with a really a smaller pack than everyone else. And I think it was it was really that the, um, yeah, Manly running straight down the middle at them. Uh, it, it just showed that they've got a problem there. So probably a scary thing because I, I got to say the Bulldogs have been a massive surprise this year. Um, mm. And going in, and I think that Manly have helped them figure out, hey, we need to fix this up before we get into into this final series. So I think it's only going to make the Bulldogs better. But um, wow, it was a great game for great game for Manly. Just a, a shame with the with the injuries. But uh, well, really- then you talk about man, uh, Bulldogs perhaps needing that loss. Let's talk about the Manly loss prior, uh, the loss of the Tigers. What happened? Yeah. Not quite sure what we were doing there. Don't know if Brooksy was just trying to help his mates out. Um, not sure at all. Um, yeah, I, I think, to be frank, I think we were kind of kidding ourselves if we thought we were going to end up top four just with the way that, that it was, even if we'd won it. I think it was going to be... I don't think we would have got there anyway. Um, it certainly well, if got you win us. it, then this weekend is a is a win and you're in win scenario. In. Yeah, I just... <laughs> I think that, I don't know. I think the Manly supporters look at it and it's been hard that you always sit there and think, yeah, you should, you should. And you look on paper and think, hey, we should win this game. And looking at it, I thought we'd win two out of the last three. Um, mm. I didn't expect it to be that it's going to be the Bulldogs the, would be the, one of them. I thought Bulldogs would be one. Sharks was always it kind of, it was going to be tight. Actually, it was more. It was more the Bulldogs away that was worrying me. I think the Sharks at home um, at Brookie, I mean, we call it Fortress Brookvale, and it's back to being a fortress. And I thought the Tigers was just a rollover. So I, uh, as, a, as a true supporter, I'd love to say they should win every game and all that stuff. I'm also a realist, and I've been through the ups and downs with, with how Manly are gone. Um, oh, it's not like uh, our ups and downs, Gracie. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> Come it, on. Look, the Tigers game was a bit of a shock, but sometimes, you know, you need a wake-up call. Um, well, Sharky's lost to the Tigers as well earlier on in the season, didn't we? And yeah. So that can sometimes, yeah. maybe that's the the loss that you also needed to have. The, you mentioned uh, Fortress Brookvale, eight yeah. from nine, I think it is this season at Brookvale, or eight of the last nine. Why is it that way? That's <sighs> a tough one. You're going to see, yeah, you sit there and say passionate fans. Well, I mean, everyone's got passionate fans and everything else. I just there's just a, a history about it that I think lifts the players. I think that the players, when they run out there, there's a different there's a different meaning for them than run out on that piece of, of, of turf um, than anywhere else, that there's just a, a passion, a history that just helps elevate those players and running out there. And I, I mean, yeah, of course, you're going to get the crowd behind you and all of that stuff, and the crowd helps you lift, but that happens everywhere. But I just think that there's history and still being one of the one of the true. I mean, you guys, you guys are uh, yeah pretty lucky in that sense as well. Yeah, one of these true suburban grounds, and I think that mm. that makes a difference. That we're not. Yeah, I feel a bit for for like the Bulldogs. I mean, you see that there's a different. They're a different team when they're playing back at Belmore to where their their home ground is out at the yeah, Olympic Olympic Stadium. Mm. Um, which is yeah, Olympic Stadium is great when it's full of seventy thousand people, but when yeah. it's ten thousand, it's just it just feels yeah, a bit bare. And how 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 popular are Manly though for them to get a yeah a game out there and and thirty odd thousand on a Friday night at six o'clock? So yeah, obviously there's a lot of passionate Manly Manly fans to to travel out. I seem to be more now. I remember there was a. <laughs> <laughs> there was a manly, manly roosters, was it? A, a big semi final clash in Sydney in one of the big grounds that only got 22,000 or something yeah. because they thought the manly fans wouldn't travel over the spit yeah. bridge. Yeah, yeah, no, because it was roosters. Who likes the roosters besides my wife? Yeah, no one. Um, no, but no yeah, one. Look, <laughs> there's nothing better though than, than just suburban ground. It just being, hey, I'm just going to the footy and it not being. Oh, the, the, what I love, I go to Brookie. Yeah, yeah, not being a, geez, I've had to create this event and make my way there and, and everything else and just turn around and go, you know what, beauty, you know what, Manly are playing in half an hour. I'm just Manly are playing in 40 footy. minutes, I'm going to walk on down. Uh, yeah, walk to the yeah. footy and all that. How many local stuff? boys are in the, the Manly team? Let's go look at the Manly well, team, we'll bring it up here. How many local boys are in, the, are in this lineup? Well... Do you call Daily Cherry Evans local now? Well, he's been there long enough, I think so. I mean, obviously, 
when you look at the this, Trevoy, the Trevoy brothers. brothers, yeah, they're Mona Vale Raiders, um, so just down the road and real still really strong in the community down there as well, um, which makes them, you know, um, fantastic for, for the club. And that's why, you know, Tommy's doing what Tommy's doing, you know, trying to give back to the club, which which is just... Oh, with, oh, with the money awesome. being given back. That yeah. is just a complete salary cap, Gracie. What are you talking no, about? That no, is, no, it's not. That is no. just absolute cheating. No. No, 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 no. You these, these, this family, these boys, they are community based, and what they do. Uh, there's a young fella down at Monaval Raiders at the moment that's um, um, that's yeah, you know, only a twelve year old young boy, and um, mm. you know, riddled with cancer, and they've been down there very active with fundraisers. He's a Monaval. Raiders Junior, as they were, yep. and they've been very active yep. in the local community. So, no, what what Tommy's doing, that is the type of guy that he is, and I think that's the type of guy what the whole family is. So, you know, the Dvojeviches are, are just are just fantastic and fantastic locals, and it's great to see them, you know, grow up um, and want to stay in in the club. And that's this is where the footy, the rivalry. It, it begins as local, and that's why you're passionate about your team, and I am about mine. I grew up in the area. This is mm. this is this is what it was. I mean, yeah, I grew up two doors away from Jeff Tuvey. Yeah, I had Steve Knight, an old name of the past. He played for well Roosters and Wests, but also Manly he was the PE mm. teacher. It's it's that local tribalism, and the clubs are stronger the more that they can keep these these local local yeah, juniors local playing players, through. Yeah. Um, yeah, you got to bring in. Unfortunately, it's a business. You've got to bring in external. But yeah, you know, having the Travoyeviches to a point, Lehigh Um uh, Yeah, there's been a lot of heritage with that family um, through the team as well. Um, so yeah, I, you can't say Matt Lodge or Nathan Brown are local, <laughs> um, but no, it, it's not. nice though. You get them in, into the team. And there's a real passion and desire. I mean, it happens in all of the all of the teams. But when we got a when we got a base um, of players that are that are, are local, especially the Trovoi pitches, it just makes it, it just makes it so strong. And that's what this rivalry is. This, this club is all about. It's what every club's about. And yeah, I'd love to see the league, yeah, reward for local to bring up the juniors in the salary cap to to try and get it back to to what it was um, when it was. Yeah, real, real tribalism in local areas. Tribalism of the, yeah, the tribalism of the teams. We used to love it when Andrew Eddinghausen was playing for the Sharks and Nick Graham played in the soccer team around the corner with my brother Jeff. Um, the fans at the moment for the Sharks are loving to see Sam Stone Street, who supported the Sharks. Um, you know, he remembers going to a match in 2010. It wasn't the best Sharks season. Uh, so, Gracie, you mentioned Turbo. Can you win without him? This weekend? Yeah. This weekend. Yeah. Grand Why? final? Because. No. Yeah. Oh, look, you know what? You look at the Manly team for us this year, and we got some real depth, and it's really nice to have some some quality depth across the park. And, you know, you sit there, and you'd sit there, well, what, when he was out last year, Garrick? went back to, to fullback and, and played fantastic. But he's grown as a player. The team's shuffled. And we've got now um, uh, Kula coming in at fullback. But you could have Hopawadi come in there. We've got multiple players that can actually cover these positions now. And I think the back line that Manly have with the speed that they've got, I think it's just fantastic. And, yeah, is Turbo a loss? Absolutely. But I think we can get through this week against your boys, especially at Brookvale. Um, but you need your best best team on the park to win to a win these final. to win the finals matches. You just yeah. need your best team. You need you, you, um, you can't um, win without them. The 2016 Sharks was a full strength Sharks team, no injuries. Melbourne were missing Billy Slater. That was essentially the difference. I'm sure you can pick out yeah. the manly, you know, strong finals runs and grand final wins is typically when you've got the strongest. Liner Ola Kuatu, he's a bit of a beast, didn't he? What can you tell me about him? Oh, first of all, stay out of it if it's got nothing to do with you, especially if you're in a suit on the sideline. State of origin, you're killing me. Um, getting involved in that and then getting suspended for uh, one or two weeks. My, yeah, anyway, um, when he's focused, well, and yep, last that's week, true. Yep, 
last week when he was focused, absolutely. Just sometimes you've got to keep these guys a little bit calmer um, as, a, as a supporter. Yeah, you want them getting in there, but gee was just control it. I prefer them. Yeah, at ninety eight percent, staying on the field for the for the full game and being available the next week, uh, they're mm. just losing their head a little and uh, and going over. But well, when he's on, he's really on. And against yeah, the Bulldogs, just... he was running right. And um, yeah, he was he was just he was just big last week. And um, yeah, it key, absolute key. And playing off Cherry Evans, they've they've really developed a great developed combination. In fact, yeah, in fact, Cherry Evans, yeah, what a year. For him and he's developing, he's developing. I mean, he, so Cherry yeah, Evans I mean, is still kicking on, he's as good as ever. Oh, you betcha. I mean, yeah, you don't captain Queensland, even though we hate Queensland. Um, you still got to be at a prime, you know, to be able to captain a state of origin team and then to come back. He is just he is a master, he knows how to manage his game, he knows how to manage it for him, so he stays, yeah. In, in great condition at his age and wow he just he, he can really work this team and what was really good I mean yeah Brooks new into the team but I'm starting to see that Brooks is starting to step up a bit if Cherry's slightly off his his, his game mm. um, but uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago Cherry was off the first first half and Brooks kind of stepped up but then uh, yeah he turned at half time and, and was able to switch back on but is he still at yeah top of his game yeah i think so i think he's 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 yeah be very happy to have him yeah in this form run around another year as well absolutely another year or two where do you think yeah. he sits i talk about uh, we'll, we'll compare cherry evans to nico hines in a moment where do you think cherry evans sits in the halfback pecking order across the nrl just to your first bit, we'll talk about in a moment. I mean, just because they both wear number seven, so that's the only comparison if you're talking about quality of player. But anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Warning shots fired. Um, yeah. He, he will put him in, you would put him in a tier above Nico is is, oh, is what you're saying. He's sitting oh, with, Nick, Nick, with Nico Cleary Hines. And... Oh, absolutely. And he's proven it, though. Nico Hines, I think he's a very good player. But Nico Hines is still early in his career and he needs to really prove himself consistently. Cherry Evans has been doing it for 10 years, 10 plus years, and that's what makes you that's what makes you a legend. You can come in and, you know, have one or two great years. But it's when you get to that second level, and I'm sorry, but Nico, and I'm a blue supporter, um, yeah, the state of origin's probably been a great learning curve for him, and it's actually helped him as a club player, but I think he has to he has to be able to master that. Cherry Evans has mastered. State of origin. He's led a Queensland team, yeah, to so multiple victories. victories. He's played for Australia. He's a premiership he's, player. He's, he's just he's, he's the real deal. He's, the, he's done it. He, he will go down and be one of these ones that you you look at, like your Cronks, your Slaters, and that and and Cherry Evans. Um, Probably needs another slow. premiership though, doesn't he, to be really considered oh, it, amongst that? It, it would help, but unlike. Cronk, we, we, we stick by the salary cap here at the Sea Eagles where those storm kind of didn't through that era. Um, well, and also and with that Cronk stuff is suddenly he retires and he's still on the books for the Storm and the Roosters. Just yeah. some funny stuff there. No, yeah, you no, guys. No, not, sure, not sure who he's playing for at that stage, but wherever he could get a – Yeah, could you guys – yeah, no, your, guys, player, your salary just, cap – your salary cap for trying to trick him is just is you've got Turbo just up front doing it. He should have just done it more underhanded and just taken a taken a cut for next year. No. No. What he's doing is giving back to the club for yeah. what the club has given to him. Um, because yeah, he would look back and say he hasn't played enough due to injury and he's giving back to the club. And I think that that's awesome to do. Not knowing at the time, I believe that yeah, the, the ruling from the NRL that they actually can't go back into the salary cap, so yeah. I'm not quite sure what's gonna what's gonna happen there. No, but no, he'll, make do, up he'll, the... he'll continue to do the right thing, which is well, he's doing. a he's a good fella, Turbo, and yeah. the Trobojevic family are, are well respected amongst rugby league circles. They're certainly very popular, and we see Ben Trobojevic is named at number fourteen. Give us the rundown of the makeup of the rest of this bench in comparison. The Sharks bench is a big bunch of bottles. We've got our we've we've got Dan Atkinson on the. The bench this time, so we have one utility back. Okay. What, what's the shape of the manly bench? You mean? Oh, look, you're going to say Nathan Brown. It's actually been it's been great for the team. 
um, mm. and for the, for the crowd. So yeah, he just comes off and runs runs hundred percent. And he was actually he was actually really solid against the Bulldogs. So really pleased there. Bullimore has been a bit more of a utility across, and has actually played a bit um, in the backs as well. And so he can he can he's your utility he, centre oh, if needed. No, Ben Travoyevich is. I mean, Travoyevich has come. He's come from the centres to then play second row. They had to get him in the yep. team. Um, so he started in the centres. And um, then with the strength of what we had, and this is what I'm talking about when you've got some really good depth, um, mm. yeah, they've um, – Seabolt's moved him into into um, you know, a second row uh, where need be. So Ben's, Ben's really a great utility player, can play – yeah, and will fit in the outside backs if need be, but he's also yeah. can, can can cover that middle forward. And Bullimore himself, though, um, I would say skew more to the to, to, to the forwards, but is also can 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 help out out the back. So, I think um, really good settled settled bench there that can cover numerous positions. I mean, gee whiz, last week we lost yeah two or two of our backs, but we're able to, to still be able to manage it and still be solid and able to score points in that back line. So how do you score points? How are you going to score ship points on the Sharks? Oh, look, I think we've still got um, a lot of pace. We got a lot of pace um, in in that back line. Um, and even even to a point, uh, doesn't look it, and you're talking that, yeah, you're talking Cherry Evans is, is, is over the hill. He's still got a lot of pace and, and, and smarts about him. Brooks is getting mm. confidence again, which is, which is nice. Um, and, I think I think our back line, uh, but I think I think our 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 forwards there are just they'll get on a roll, open it up, and it'll go wide. Um, but I don't want to tell you. I just also the support play of Jerry Evans, isn't it? He's just such a good oh, support yeah. player. Whenever a break is made, he's got. He knows where he needs to be. Yeah, he knows where he needs to be. Um, yeah, and and good or bad, you've got players here. So like Ruben Garrick has played now a lot of. Quality first grade as fullback, unfortunately, when Turbo was injured, but he played wing. He's now playing centres. they got a feel for the game. He's, he's comfortable across that whole back line. He can actually find a hole as well. He's not like just staying where he needs to be. So I think there's some versatility in where some of these guys have played that gives them the, I don't know, gives them the nous to know where to be at a particular point. You know, All right. the way the game Let's look fine. ahead to this. Let's look at the Sharkies team, Gracie. Uh, who scares you? Are you worried about uh, number 19 coming off the uh, extended interchange bench? Sifa Talakai is not even in my team list there. Who, who scares you? Oh, yeah, well, he obviously does. I've still got nightmares from that a couple of years ago when he just he just steamrolled. Mm. Literally, just every time he touched the ball, he just ran over the top. Um, that was an amazing, amazing game for him. Um, i got to say, William Kennedy is a, is a fullback. <clears throat> Probably a little underrated. He's not. He's not yep. flash. He's not fancy. Just gets it done. Um, and I actually quite enjoy watching him. Uh, yeah, your two wingers are a bit uh, bit show pony for me. Um, they do a job, but I think if they if they focused on the game instead of themselves a bit more and their look, they'd probably be a bit more of a handful for us. But look, Hines coming back in, he's got a lot to prove. Um, and I think a surprise for you guys this year, uh, Braden Trindle's been been pretty Terrific. impressive um yeah overall and why you're in the position you're in you've got a pretty really well balanced team but interestingly enough probably a team with a little lacking confidence after last week we'll be up 22 four or six at half four. time yeah and um yeah it's it all, a pretty, it all pretty angry podcast host out there gracie uh who yeah. did, might have done tuesday and sunday night shows if you haven't if you're a Sharks fan just oh, yeah. checking this out and you want to feel the pain again of Sunday night, go watch our episode of The yeah. Debrief. It's our most watched yeah. ever episode on the ET stand um, of yeah. the post, Matt. They were pretty pumped uh, up. Yeah, well, okay, I, just I, I, to- I run a footy comp and um, <clears throat> that particular game was uh, featured quite highly in the way that uh, the footy comp that I run worked, um, especially being up where they were at half time and to where that game finished. So really interesting. So, yeah, coming off low confidence, Hines back in. Um, and the reality is, I don't think it matters to you, does it? If it may you, not matter. Win. So the Bulldogs I, I need to win. The Bulldogs need to win and overturn a 68-point for and against differential for for them to take fourth position off yeah, us, that, which, which you have which, to think which, is... 
it's, it's not going to happen. It's not Which is happen. you'd so, have to think is is unlikely. I think it's a, I think it's two hundred <clears throat> to one. I think of the bets you can get on for the Bulldogs to make the top four. You'd have to think that's not going to happen. But if the Bulldogs lose to the Cowboys, then you may see the Sharkies put the queue in the rack, and we might rest a whole bunch of players. I, look, I I think that you're going to go in. Unfortunately, I think you're going in there already thinking. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Protect ourselves doesn't. and all of that stuff. Um, and I, 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 I know in sport, it's it's really important. If you go in soft or softer, that's where you get injured. You've got to keep up and, and play hard. Boulder, you're probably yeah. not aware of that. You probably weren't an elite athlete. I did okay. I'm injured, I'm injured at the moment. So oh, I yeah, I <laughs> what do you mean I wasn't? I was a first grade. I was a first grade buddy soccer player. What are you talking about, oh, buddy okay. elite athlete? Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm not a boxer. Anyway. I'm not a boxing. I'm not a former boxing champion in my no, later yeah. ages like you, Gracie. Come on. Um, look, I, just I think, think you're right though. You're, you're right. Yeah. If the Sharkies, if they if they take them lightly and they don't prepare properly and think that this is a fair income game, then they are actually at risk of, of an injury. They'll certainly be going out yeah. trying to win and no one wants to to just phone it in. But a, but a Cowboys win When it's all on the be... line, yeah, when it's all on the line, though, and there's 20 minutes to go, it's like, geez, we actually don't really need to do this and foot comes off well, the Well, that's correct. If, if, if Hines is a little shaky and he's he's got a bit of a – an ankle twinge or something like that, and there's 20 minutes to go, and we're up by four points or down by four points, and it makes no difference. Then they're taking Heinz off, aren't they? Yeah, so, so I think that alone might get it, might might help Manly out. Where do you, as a Manly fan, mate, see the Sharkies as a rival or an opponent? Where do we sit in terms of the rivalries for you? Oh. I think it all started with well, the, the draw grand final and then the, the replay on the Tuesday. Yeah. I can't remember. And um, and we won that and it just started this this hatred. You know, you got the, the Southern Shire and the beaches there and the, the Northern beaches, which, you know, I mean, let's just be realistic. If you you live in Sydney, you know the Northern beaches are nicer anyway. So that started just a, a beaches rivalry. <laughs> then you got the, the, the footy that goes on there. Um, I think, look, to be frank, if you, you watch any game, go down to Brookie and there's this wonderful sign that Manly hates you too. I think that we've got a rivalry against everyone. Um, Sharks is one of the ones, though, because it's I suppose it's, it's beach food. But you got the wood on us, though. Yeah. You just always win it. Oh, no. I, unfortunately, if it's down at Brookie, for the first time, you guys have won there in years. Uh, was it? I think was we won the last, last two at Brookdale, year. actually. Oh, sorry, yeah, and it was yeah, um, on the last two. Very, very oh. unpleasant. Very unpleasant. Um, yeah, but that's that's also uh, yeah. Without being rude, big game experience. I mean, you guys, yeah, up until till what was it? Um, when was the grand final? Twenty twenty sixteen. Sixteen. Up until then, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah a lot of bridesmaids never getting anywhere, and I think the pressure. Um, so we had well, the a different team to that grand friends. final. Oh, yeah. So yeah, the, it always um, changes, but um, yeah, I think the I think you're right in your big game experience. There's a big difference. Cherry Evans versus Nico. There's just an enormous uh, experience gap in those pressure moments. Cherry Evans has kicked field goals in state of origin test matches and finals matches, whereas we don't quite have that, and we looked overall. It's going to be a pumped up manly crowd on. Sunday. Oh, Sunday. I think that... Well, we've had we've had a sellout every game, which is yeah. fantastic for rugby league. But then it goes back to being those suburban grounds again. Yeah, having that that you've got the ability to have the sellout, it creates so it's selling for the next game and the next game and the next game because yeah, you know, brutal. I couldn't get a out. ticket myself, Gracie. Yeah. If you got a spare yeah. ticket, let me know. Anyone out there in the comments or say DM us. Are you going um, down to the game? No, I couldn't. I like you actually. Actually. Um, couldn't get myself a ticket. Uh, I had my membership uh, for personal reasons. Kind of dropped that uh, two years ago, um, and then have just been been going along anyway, and hasn't been mm. a big issue. But this one, yeah, I think people have got in early, especially last potential last game at Brookie. I don't think it will be. I think we'll have another one and another sellout. Well, yeah, because if you win, you get the week one finals, don't you? So yes. you'd expect to play what week one, and then you'll play the Cowboys in in week one. That's what we ex- what you'd expect to happen, isn't it? Really, which, that's what uh, you're expecting, which would be nice. And I think that uh, I think that uh, yeah, I think 
yeah, don't want to don't want to play any of them away. I think especially in that first week, um, I think it's really important. I think the home home game um, makes a big difference, and I also think it's going to be really interesting. I know those, the, yeah, your top four teams are, are pretty strong, but um, I still you guys are pretty good when year. you guys are pretty good full strength, Tracy. If yeah, you've I, got I think a... it, it could be it could be interesting if we it if we be, get yeah. it back. Um, All right, so what's your tip, mate? Who's what's how's this how's this one play out? Oh, tip and manly win, aren't you? Yeah, I've got to, absolutely got to, and um, yeah, I think it's I think it'll be tied up until half time. I think early in the second half, manly will start to get away, and that's when your guys, yeah, emotionally, will say yeah, will probably take their foot off because they'll be looking looking at next week already. Uh, and wanting to make sure that they're out there next week. And I think Manly will, will probably yeah, win it by about 14. All right. I think that's probably pretty close to the money. Uh, we will see. I'm oh, what? So you'll say Manly will win by 14. Boulder. Oh, Manly will win. I think, Manly, I think Manly will win. Well, we run a tipping comp on the ET Stand podcast amongst our hosts where you've just got to tip the Sharks matches. And I'm one point behind the leader who has tipped the Sharks every single week. So I've, I've picked this week as my week that I can catch up. To, okay. to to take it out, but I just know the um the sharks have had a poor performances at at Brookvale for years and years and years. It's a long trip uh, in terms of a bus ride. I think it's the longest trip in rugby league that gets done by a team on game day. If it's any further than that, they typically book a hotel. Sharks just don't typically do well at Manly. We're still getting Nico still feeling his way back into the game, but prove me wrong, Sharks. I love to be proven wrong by you guys. Um, so we'll we'll certainly see what happens. But yeah, two o'clock on Sunday. And I think it's this stuff. It's those jerseys. It's the heritage of me. Are, play, are they playing in the heritage jersey this week? No, they? no, but I'm just saying though, that's the stuff that, yeah, that's why Brookie is so strong. It's with this heritage. And, you know, Sharks are going to be looking at that when they get down there again. And I think it's going to hurt them. We'll see. Well, see, talking to you, though, certainly fired me up. I wanted to say the Sharks. Really <laughs> Bugger you. You heard it here. Bloody Manly fans, Nico. They're saying you're not good enough. You're not as good as Cherry. No, I didn't say. Oh, well, he's, 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 I'm, not saying he's, no, I'm not saying he's clip not, it. I'm not saying he's not good enough, but he's yeah, he's not at the level of Cherry Evans. He's got some potential, though, but he's still got to prove a lot. Um, but, he's, yeah, he's, no, he's, still not, got he's not, not close at Cherry Evans. I mean, you look at it. I'm sorry. Yeah, Cherry Evans is... Currently, premier premier halfback in the in the competition. Well, with clearly injured, I'd probably say that's right. All right. Well, look, that was Simon Grace, Mister Grace, big manly super fan. Uh, you can tell by the amount of jerseys. I don't think I yeah. even own more shark jerseys than you own manly jerseys, and that is saying something because I do certainly own a lot of sharkies jerseys. Uh, Sharks fans, uh, we will be live uh, with the debrief after the Matty John show on Sunday evening at 7 p.m. to get your thoughts, feelings in a live episode of the debrief with my dear co-host Stephen Franklin. We'll be going through the trials and tribulations of what is hopefully a Sharks win. Uh, we will have a Chronicles episode of the ET stand out um, in the next 24 hours so you can relive a past shark victory. It's either going to be the 2004 Sharks victory over the Sea Eagles at Brookvale, I think, or maybe 2000. I think it's 2004. And, uh, mate, Simon, thanks for coming in, mate. You're an absolute gentleman. You've uh, given us a bit of shtick, though. Yeah. And, look, guys, um, happy to give away a display where you I will for, for one, of your, one of your listeners. So, I mean, We'll yeah. do that. We'll do, yeah. a, we'll do a giveaway. Um, if anyone has any comments on what, um, what we should do as the comp as the giveaway, we might do it as – best comment of the year or something between now and the finals. I'll think of that between that uh, and Sunday's show and we'll um, we'll get that as a giveaway happening. But Gracie, thanks for coming on, mate. You're an absolute gentleman. Um, no problem, hopefully we enjoyed the game on Sunday and we're not talking about the referees. <laughs> we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, and everyone, see. and hopefully we're, everyone's available to play the following week as well, whether it's in And hopefully everyone's available to play in the following week. And yeah. um, and we'll see you in the grand final, Gracie, for another opposition fan oh, preview. No, that, that would be awesome. That would, would be. Be, that would be a great year. That would be. All right, that was the ET Stand Podcast Opposition Fan Preview. We'll see you guys next year. Thank you, Mr. Grace. Thanks. For over 50 years, people have come to see the Sharks play. Talent. Skill. Speed. Intelligence. Elite level athleticism. That's not these guys. Biased. One-eyed. Opinionated. More often wrong than right. 
They make up for their complete lack of talent with pure dribble, gibberish and enthusiasm. This is the ET Stand Podcast.